The illegal wildlife trade is a multi-billion dollar global industry and rare Australian species are in high demand both domestically and overseas. But wildlife authorities in Western Australia are putting unscrupulous collectors on notice that they're using a new weapon in the fight against poaching, applying the same DNA profiling techniques used in human forensics. Danielle Parry reports from the West. This endangered Carnaby's cockatoo chick is about to get its first glimpse of the world outside its nest. It's just a few weeks old, but wildlife officers are anxious to get a closer look at its DNA in the hope it could help save the species from extinction. Oh. Carnaby's cockatoos are only found in southwestern WA and the birds are under serious threat from loss of habitat and poaching. There's about 40,000 carnabies, um, but if you go back to the 50s, there was 150,000, so you don't have to be Einstein to do the math, that's a little bit of a worry. Fetching up to $30,000 a pair, carnabies are a prized commodity in one of the world's biggest black markets. From what we know, the scale of wildlife crime seems to be quite large, in the order of 10 to $20 billion US. It's thought to be third behind um, human trafficking and drugs. Australian birds and reptiles are a favourite target of this global trade that stretches from backyard collectors through to high-end criminal syndicates. Catching those responsible is no easy task and wildlife authorities are increasingly turning to science to help them keep up. The offenders of these sorts of crimes are well organised, they're intelligent, they utilise technology, they utilise the internet, they use Skype, all sorts of things like that. Uh, law enforcement certainly needs to uh, be very up to date and use cutting edge technique. Okay, one big kick. Wildlife officer Rick Dawson and PhD student Nicole White are leading a West Australian team that's adapting human DNA profiling techniques to the cockatoo world. We go out into the nesting areas every year pull the chicks out, profile them, put them in the database and then when we do have an unknown or a suspect individual, we can run that through the database. So it's kind of like wildlife CSI? It is kind of like wildlife CSI. Prosecuting nest robbers is a tricky business. The wildlife detectives have spent four years building up the genetic markers for Carnaby's cockatoos. And they're now able to prove whether an aviary bird was bred legally from captive parents or taken from the wild. Two, three. I can run uh, what is basically paternity testing. It's the same as they do in the human forensics. So now we have the markers up and running that can allow us to do that. Based on their extensive DNA database from cockatoo nesting sites, the team can even pinpoint where a bird was likely to have been poached from. If you uh, nest rob a white tailed black cockatoo chick now, you need to be a bit, little bit careful because we've got a very, very big um, database of, uh, of carnivores and I can guarantee you we'll be able to tell you whether you bred or whether you took it from the wild. Mate. Yeah, mate, we've confirmed that they're home. West Australian authorities are now so confident in the technique that they're branching out into other prized native species. All right, so we'll just take the opportunity to bag this. There's a growing illegal market for Australian snakes and lizards, and DNA is proving a vital tool for proving a reptile's provenance. If you're taken from the wild um, and you don't have the appropriate licence, then you're committing offence. A carpet python's the same. Same as a carnivore's black cockatoo, they're both endangered and it's $10,000 fine. Where wildlife officers would once have needed to take a scale clipping from each seized reptile to get its DNA, the team has pioneered a simpler mouth swabbing technique that doesn't scar the animal. It's not invasive. Two or three minutes, we're out the door and we'll be able to tell you one way or the other whether you really bred it. So far, the team has secured 15 DNA results, proving birds and snakes were stolen from the wild or illegally imported. But the evidence is yet to be contested in court in WA because so far in every case the accused has pleaded guilty. There have been many cases which have gone to court involving wildlife DNA but as far as I'm aware there haven't been any which have actually gone to appeal or someone's defended themselves. They've said you've got the DNA, you've got the proof, I've done it. 
animal cruelty cases could be a new frontier for this niche science. So yeah, he has got two broken teeth yeah. on the top. Yeah. The team was recently called in to help police investigate a case where a man is accused of kicking a quokka on Rottnest Island off the coast of Perth. They took DNA samples from the injured animal to build up their quokka database. One pair? Yes. Nike sand shoes? Yes. They were then asked to DNA test a spot of blood found on the accused man's shoe. What we're trying to do with the police is determine whether the blood material on the sand shoes is quokka. So it's basically a species identification of the material that's on the sand shoes. West Australian authorities are urging their counterparts across the nation to embrace wildlife forensics. They say DNA is tipping the scales in their favour as they battle increasingly sophisticated illegal operators. I think people actually see Australia as easy shopping for the illegal trade industry and I want the message to go out that we now have the DNA tools available to assist in investigations. I think people are a little scared about DNA, and you know what? So they should be, because it's very powerful. Maybe the edge was with the nest robber or the illegal taker. Now I'd suggest you the edge is with us. Danielle Parry reporting from the West.